Greetings, weirdlings. I am Danny Danger, and this is my poll list for July the 1st. Happy sort of 4th of July, it's coming up. Read some Captain America. In Deadly Class number 14, Marcus is now isolated from all of his friends. He screwed up and he's all high and stuff. He's got problems, because that's what this story needed was more underage kids using drugs. Seriously. Marcus, get it together. This is all your fault. Welcome to adult. <laughs> the Wicked and the Divine number 12 introduces a new story arc when which all of the gods are fighting, which is different, but kind of the same. <laughs> but it'll have a bunch of featured guest artists, which is really exciting to me because I love McKelvey, but this is one of those works where you have the characters drawn so richly and they wear so many different outfits and they do so many different visually stimulating things that now that you've got a story arc out of the way with, you know, McKelvey's fantastic art to invite other artists on to then experiment and do things their way is going to be really cool. And I'm actually super stoked about it. A Force number two comes out this week and I loved the first issue of this book for obvious reasons. But now that a bunch of monsters are attacking the island of Arcadia, we're gonna see She-Hulk debate with herself whether or not she wants to follow Doom's law or whether she wants to take care of her people. And I think we all know how this choice is gonna be made, especially if you read the first issue because America Chavez, y'all. Also, bonus points for appropriate use of giant shark. Group number two comes out. I enjoyed the first issue. It's it's kind of weird because I'm glad that Groot has his own title, but it sort of feels like this is, and it is an extension of the Rocket Raccoon comic, but I sort of feel like this should have just been like Groot and Rocket Raccoon. Actually, I feel like the alternate take to this could be, I am Groot, number two. I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. And I am Groot. And everyone will just understand because I'm Groot. Squirrel Girl number seven has Squirrel Girl fighting the Avengers. Now, what I'm really curious about is that some Marvel stories like um, Loki, Magneto, Black Widow are dealing with what's going on in Secret Wars. And then there are other stories that are just like not touching it at all. And Squirrel Girl is one of those stories where we just have like no idea what's happening to her before, during, or after Secret Wars. In Years of Future Past number two, we're going to get a look at Kitty Pride's memory, uh, the things that mutants have had to do to survive. And I really like I really like this story, but I'm glad that they're painting this particular story from Kitty's perspective, because I feel like the injustices done to mutant kind are going to hurt even more watching them being done or seeing them through Kitty Pride's eyes, because how do you not love Kitty Pride? Also, Secret Wars number four comes out, Secret Wars Journal number three comes out, and, oh, Ultimate End number three, which really surprised me. I was not expecting to enjoy Ultimate End nearly as much as I did. I should have known, it's a Bendis book, whatever. What's on your pull list this week? Tell me down below in the comments. Be sure to like this video, share, and subscribe. And speaking of amazing comments, we got some great ones. Uh, Jon Snow's Direwolf, congratulations on having my favorite YouTube name, or so far, like account name to today. That's a really good name. And I had really good feelings and thoughts about Black Canary number one. It was wonderful. I loved it so much. I really enjoyed it. I like this new look for Canary. I like this new, uh, you know, this new situation. I love her being in a band. The coloring in this book really won it over for me. Um, you know, we talk about how much I dig colorists and how good color in a book can really change the tone of things. And that book would have not been nearly as impactful without the colorist. So it's great. I'm gonna continue to read it. I was really happy with it. Agro Crow, I am really sad that you also had a horrible week reading your comics. I also, throw my comics when I get upset. I don't actually throw my comics when I get upset, but I make this face and I have friends and like even my husband knows, like when I make that face, something bad is happening. So I like that you are you have your partner trained to get you ice cream when uh, you're having a horrible time reading. Mine's usually chocolate, but also ice cream. Slumbo413 is really, really excited about last week's issue of Grayson and um, 
I am too, but for a totally different reason. So there have been conversations that fans have had in the past about uh, Dick Grayson's sexuality. And I guess there was a panel in Dick Grayson or in Grayson number nine that called it into question. I have not actually read the issue yet. So you will have to tell me down below in the comments what you thought about it. But I'm really excited. I have heard really, really good things about this series. A special thanks as always goes out to Austin Books and Comics, this holy shrine for comic books. Take care of all of our things. This is why we're allowed to have nice things because Austin Books and Comics exists. Nothing else. I have nothing else to give you world.